Hi everybody, it's Sandy and it is time for another video. I'm using my European vacation for inspiration right now. This is tartan and argyle-ish backgrounds in watercolor. I'm going to use this watercolor cold press paper from Strathmore and I've cut it into two card bases. It's a 9 by 12 pad so you can get two card bases out of one piece of the watercolor paper and it's good and heavy so it stands up as a one layer card but it has two sides and I thought I'd show them to you and then test out myself which one I like better and if there's maybe a reason for liking one better than the other so this is a very close up of the two sides as much as my camera wanted to do the one on the left has more of a linear texture to it and you can sort of see there's there's little lines and stuff in it and it'll give you that texture when you paint and stamp on it the other one is a lot smoother so you're going to want to test out any watercolor papers you have uh, just cut a little corner of it and try some watercoloring and stamping on it before you commit to using up your paper on uh, on your watercoloring until you know exactly what it, how it's going to work best I'm using Rangers Archival Jet Black ink to stamp some flowers in the corner from this Hero Arts set and I just wanted a collection of flowers down in the corner and a sentiment so that I could do the background on the rest of the card and I wanted it to be a really loose and washy background so you'll see how how that develops but I've stamped the same design on both pieces of paper the one on the left you can tell it did not stamp very well that's the one that had the linear texture in the paper itself so I'm going in with a sharpie and fixing the places that bothered me the most I'm not going to fix all of it and I mean you could really spend a lot of time doodling around with it but I kind of figured it's going to be all right. The background is going to be real soft and washy, so I'm going to let it go. Next up is masking fluid. And this particular one, which everything's going to be linked in the doobly-doo down below. This one has a needle to dispense it and it has a needle that holds that needle open. So when it's stored, it has something inside of it. So I'm going to line up my stencil at the top of my card. I have the card flat and open, that's why it's not lining up at the top of a piece of paper but I'm going to just go inside the stencil I'm not going all the way to the edge of the stencil because then it's going to splooge underneath of it and this whole technique is very loose and watercolory and washy so it doesn't have to be perfect also this material when you dispense it doesn't come out super evenly at least I haven't found a way for it to come out exactly even and not have any of those little bloops because the instant you turn it over you don't even have to really squeeze and it starts coming out already so you're gonna to want to come up with ideas for it that are loose and are not gonna make you feel like you need to be absolutely perfect I'm making a shim for my little ruler <laughs> and I wanted to make sure I didn't stick too much of it onto the ruler itself because I want to be able to take it off so that is a piece of dimensional adhesive with a post-it note covering it so only two parts the two edges of the adhesive are sticking to the ruler this is a ruler that sailors use on nautical charts and I've had one since my sailing days and I liked using it enough in a couple of past videos that I I now keep it in my craft room on my craft desk and use it for a lot of a lot of doodling things when I need something to line up with the edge of a piece of paper because this has rulers uh, it has the ruler on it it also has the little wheels on it so you can just roll down a piece of paper and get something even all the way across it which is very cool I'm not measuring out exactly where these lines are I'm just gonna make random ones I'm not gonna make one of there's a, a bunch of different types of tartans that are much more rigid but then I also found some online that were kind of hit or miss in terms of their equality of distance between each one, one of the stripes and I went for the looser kind because that's gonna be a lot easier right so this one I moved my shim over so that I didn't have to wait for the first layer to dry and then I, I my wheels just ran down in between some of the lines that are already there so otherwise you could do this after you wait for it to dry now this one is dry we need to go back to it and add some more you could add the, the diamonds in the next row down or you can crisscross some there's a ton of different ways that you can line this up to make a really cool pattern I decided to make another row right across this one and then later on I'll just make another step down and create some more in-betweens but I'm just gonna do the same thing as I did before and 
run all the way around each one of these to create that pattern. And then I will let it dry as well. So the first one to get dry was this one. So um, I went, went for it and got out the watercolors. And I'm going to start painting my pattern on there, my little tartan. And it's going to be loose. It's going to be really wet. So I'm going to just add a lot of water and not really go down any of the stripes super carefully. Sometimes you can get too rigid with things and then it just doesn't look all fresh and happy. So that's what I wanted to try to see if I could do this. I'm, you know, normally Copic girl and that means a lot of control. So I'm really playing with a lot of watercolor before I leave. Well, I'm already gone, but before I left and while I was filming these videos, I was really trying to loosen myself up so that I'm ready for painting my way across Europe. When I get back from the trip, hopefully I will have some videos to share of me painting or things I saw or I don't know what I'm going to do over there. I'm going to take my camera and see what happens and take a bunch of watercolors to play with while I'm there and traveling around. So I'm adding a couple of different colors on this and then taking some color back off so that it's not too strong and then uh, dabbing dabbing as needed. Um, you can leave it really strong on there. You can put more layers of color on there. I decided I wanted some more green in there as well and part of the reason you want to put more color is because the white lines when we take away that green masking fluid the white lines are not going to show if there's not color on either side of them so all that work that you've done to mask something off will be lost if you don't put enough color around it so I wanted to make sure I had plenty of color in the empty stripes along this and letting the colors just mix in the places where they crisscross because that's how it does in fabric. That top stripe I almost I was considering leaving just by itself and, and not going all along it and so that's what I actually did. When you, I get to the card at the very end you'll see that I did add one more stripe, a little darker stripe of green across the whole top of it just because I wanted to finish it off. The rest of these all did go out to the edge which I wasn't really planning on originally in my mind so yeah, adapt as we go. And I'm, I'm now wishing that at this point I had added another strip of the green at the top. There you have it. So set that aside to dry and now I can start filling in these little shapes on the argyle. So I threw in some water first and then I can just dab in watercolor. Just let it run, let it fill that space because these shapes will create little little wells for all that color to fill in on. So more water in there and then dab some more color in. I'm going to throw some, I'm going to do two at a time and I'm going to throw some more green in there. Most of these, I mean you, you could do them all in different colors but most of the patterns that I see of course online in doing my research for this had you know very structured patterns so all the greens will be in a row that kind of thing. And after I got one layer of color down, I dabbed a little bit and then decided I wanted to take away a little bit more and loosen up some more color, nice and soft. Then I went to add a, a blue and I went for a nice bright blue and uh, just filling these in. These, uh, by the way, the watercolors I'm using, this is a Koi watercolor sketch box and it has a palette that's just off to the left there and it fits into those four little holes in the, the case. And so this is one of the one of the watercolors that I'm going to take with me on the trip that is already there, I guess, with me. I keep talking in the future, but I wanted to make sure I added um, added a couple different watercolors to my roster so that I could really play with a bunch of different things while I'm over there and see what I feel inspired to do. And at some point I will have an assessment of all of them and what I liked about each one what they work best for, if there's any that work better with particular types of papers or anything. So make sure you are subscribed to be able to get that content whenever it is I get around to doing it. I have a huge list of stuff to do when I get back and ideas that I have for so many videos. All right, dabbing off the yellow ochre type of color, I don't know if that's what it's called in this set, but. I am also now going to add some color in between each of these sections. These are um, the, the places that are white needs to have some kind of color in it or else those white lines are not going to show up. 
So I keep dabbing off the color or at least trying to add enough water so I get that really soft color. You can see on the left there it's, it is achieved. So I'm using a rubber cement pickup and uh, it's got, it comes by a different bunch of different names but it gets adhesive off and it works really great for removing masking fluid. You just want to make sure that your paper is completely completely dry before you try to take this off or you will very easily rip the surface of your paper. Think about trying to use an eraser on a wet piece of paper and watercolor paper of some sort. That will be a bit of a problem. So you just rub it over top of it. You can remove it just with your finger, but if you do that, remember that you're going to get some oils from your finger onto your paper. And if you want to do any extra stamping or coloring or something, that could interfere with that. So this thing works really, really well. Here's a look at the finished Argyle card, and I just love how it came out. I was even surprised with how pretty it was behind this. I hadn't tested it out before I shot the video, and I thought it came out really, really pretty. You can use all different kinds of colors, different strengths of colors, and it looks like almost like it's wallpaper behind the card. And here's the tartan one, or the semi-tartan-ish card. And again, the background came out really soft and pretty in the background, and it's you can tell it's got some regimented lines in it, but it's also got that watercolor wash, which I think makes it a really fun combination of the two. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two textures, what they look like on the watercolor and how you can see the difference in how the color sets. One sets into those lines, so you almost get that linear texture in the paint itself, and the other is a little more free form. So it's all entirely up to what you want on your painted piece but know that the stamping on the linear side is really, really tough. At least tough for me. <laughs> Make sure you have a really good juicy pad to do that with. Alrighty, here are two more videos if you want to go see more of my crazy stuff. One is a watercolor painting video with some flowers, and the other is one that I did with some ink tense pencils and water and came up with some really fun craziness in the background of that one. Take care, and I'll talk to you guys later. Cheerio. Bye.